saw the door swing open and my mayor walked in. Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson, Mayor of the City of Karen, come on, you do a better than that.
have no direction. Yeah. And shooting stars burn out very quickly. Rather than a shooting star, he's a rocket. He's a rocket with at least three stages. Rockets have predetermined destinations. And they have a plan on how they're going to get there. And the fuel to make the journey. I present to you our rocket man, the pastor of the new revelation.
best thing I've ever done. Tried to fall in love with other things and other people just to be disappointed. But once I decided to fall in love with Jesus, it's the best thing I've ever Anybody else in the house? Yeah. You have that testimony. Thank you to the choir, to our musicians, to our church. This must be the Lord's doing. Because it's marvelous in my sight. To him be glory and honor for the great things he has done. I am proud yet unpretentious for this grand opportunity to serve as the 14th president of the Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial Baptist State Convention of Indiana. The Bible is right. Your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. If you don't mind me, just do it in my way. Amen. When I think about how I got here, I heard Sister Clarita Thornton said earlier, sometimes you don't know how you get certain places or why you were even looked upon. But I have to give honor and credit to where credit is due. It was Pastor Reed, my big brother and friend, Reverend Raymond McDonald II. Amen. We were at the state convention as he was ending his term. And all because I was there. I was in the mix. I was there. He actually asked about another person, but the other person wasn't there. Amen. And he said, he didn't ask me. He said, Ed, I'm going to put your name in as second vice once I check with the other pastors. This is what he said. To see if it's okay. And I guess it's okay because I'm here. Amen. <laughs> sure you check with Pastor Reed. Amen. Pastor Evans, Pastor Mitchell at that time the rest of the pastors, and I praise God for that. Amen. There are some folk that will try to keep you down Amen. because you're young, Amen. but he considered me. And for that, I'll never be grateful. You never forget for those who considered you all because I showed up. That's a preaching point, but I ain't got time. But I thank God for my family. My father's here. Amen. Wake up, y'all. Wake up, y'all. Wake up, y'all. Wake up, y'all. My two sisters. Dana. Stand up. Hey, Melvin. Two nieces, Jayla and Jasmine, are they? Where are they? Jasmine. I guess my brother in love, my sister's husband, he, my brother, he's not here. Maybe he's with my nephew. He's probably on a football field somewhere. Y'all see my nephew. I'm looking for him to go to the NFL and pay his time. Say amen. <laughs> Let be out there, amen. And to my daughter. Amen. She's been rolling with me all week, amen. Stand up, Lord. Amen. 
Amen. I find great joy in that because on this morning, before we left the house, my daughter prayed for me. Amen. What a blessing it is when you pray for your children that your children can turn around and pray for you. To my godmother, Helen. Amen. Send us God. Thank you. And I know that amen. Deacon Danny, amen. Stand up, Deacon Danny. These two people have been instrumental in my life. And you should never forget, Mama Helen was my mother's best friend. Amen. Oh, how I wish Mama was here. To see her son. But I carry her with me. Everywhere I go. Some folk even say I act like a so hey, Y'all do dancing, y'all would like to say. I have the distinct honor of pastoring some of the greatest people you'll ever want to meet. I'm not just saying this because I'm their pastor. I know some of us have to say it. But I'm saying this wholeheartedly, unequivocally, undeniably, the new revelation. Baptist Church, some of the greatest people you ever want to meet. And I cannot take the credit for it. I've just been there three years. But I thank God for my predecessor, Pastor Mitchell. The groundwork he did and everything he did, amen, for me to enjoy what I enjoy at the church. Pastor Mitchell always said, he said, he always pastored with the next person in mind. Amen. And I'm glad that I was the next person. Amen. Amen. Choir, musicians, numbers, my youth, showed out. Amen. Amen. I have one of the best administrative assistants the church could have. Amen. And Sister Pat Cook. And what happened to Pat? What happened to Sister Pat? Give our hand, amen. That is the one that printed all these books. Amen. She does everything with an attitude of excellence. Amen. I appreciate her and all that she do. Amen. Uh, I want to say to all the pastors of this convention, God bless you. Amen. You are on the backbone, amen, amen. of the convention. I am honored as a boy. I grew up in church. Um, my mother took us to church. I loved going to church. I never thought I would be in this position. And I grew up, first, most people may not know, but I grew up in 11. I gave my life to the Lord, Mother's Day, 1984. I was seven years old. And that was at the Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. The Reverend Jesse Simmons was the pastor. Then at 11 years old, as we would have to stay down south for the summer, amen. amen. It was in 1988 that when we came back from Big Mama's house, my mother joined another church, the Clark Road Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Ferris Evans was the pastor. Amen. Put your hands together, amen. The pastor. That's where I got my start. That's why I got my foundation. That's why I grew up playing the drums. Amen. Got my call there, and I just thank God for those that have helped me along life's way. Amen. But in July, the first Sunday in July, 2017, I entered a new season in my life, and the Lord directed me to the Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor is the one and only, the Reverend Dr. Charles L. Emory, amen. Pastor Emory is my man, amen. I love Pastor Emory, amen. We're bowling buddies, amen. 
we were to go bowling every Wednesday morning, every Monday, amen. And I just thank God for friends along the way. Uh, I thank God for two of my closest friends, I'm somewhat old soul, but I thank God for people in my life that helped me along the way. Of course, several people around this country have played a part in my life. I never forget people like Roger Huggins, Secure of Baltimore, and names can go on and on and on and on. But there are two uniquely unique people in my life that I kind of roll with. I know they're uh, distinct in their own way. But if y'all don't mind me using contemporary vernacular, they are my boys. That is the Reverend Daryl L. McDonald. Stand up, Reverend McDonald. I told you that Raymond was my big brother. Most people thought that Raymond was older, amen. But actually, Daryl is the older brother, so Daryl is my older brother, amen, somebody. Amen. And who came all the way from Lexington, Kentucky, they... Right. Okay. Y'all didn't even know who I'm going to say. All right, all right. They have dubbed us in the region TNT. Tyler is our newly installed president of the Midwest region. And I'm his first vice, and I'm the one that keeps these two guys from fighting. Amen. All right. Or Daryl, if we're riding together, Daryl in the car sleep. And Tyler taking pictures of us. Amen. I thank God for these friends, really. I call these two guys a lot. You need somebody that you can vent to, that you can get advice from. Amen. Daryl, he, he, he's just a, a guy that knows a lot. I call him, really, I just call him the poly parliamentary procedure, how church is supposed to function, how church is supposed to go. Uh, you call Daryl, both of these guys, I call them for different things. Because sometimes if I call Tyler, I'm going to get a sermon. <laughs> Sometimes I need a regular word. I need to write down word. <laughs> An exegetical, amen. Discourse, amen. But I call them, amen. And I just thank God for these two brothers. Amen. amen. They mean the world. So you give them a hand, amen. <laughs> Preachers at my church, deacons. Deacons, stand up. Let me see some of my deacons right here. Deacons of our church, amen. Some of them are here. We just thank God for each and every one of them. We honor them. Our preachers are here. Reverend Sean Dawson and Reverend Wilson is here. Amen. Our associates. We thank God for them. I appreciate my first advice, Pastor Gardner, who has known me for many, many years. He watched me run. I, I heard him announce. Amen. Amen. Trinity. Your hospitality has been second to none. You all rolled out the red carpet this week. Just put our hands together. All those that have experienced the hospitality of this great church. You all have set a standard. You made us feel welcome and comfortable. And thank you for sharing your worship space and your ministry space with us on this week. We did some new things this year. We had vendors downstairs something that was not normative, normative for our convention, but we had vendors, we had sponsors, we got ads, and one of those ads are coming from the people I love, amen. The Kyle Coleman Funeral Home, y'all stand up over there, amen. You see them on the back of the program. I thank God for praying the people and other vendors that are downstairs, are they still here? If they are not downstairs, you can go and support them. I won't be too much longer, I promise you. But to second Vice President Dick Guthrie, thank you for your support. Thank you for your insight and input. To the rest of my executive staff, secretary, correspondent, secretary, treasurer, financial secretary, thank you so much to my appointed staff. Thank you, Pastor Robinson, for being my friend and all that you have added, the things that we share. Sister Hortense Springfield, Sister Andrea Thurman, I appreciate you all. To all the department heads for your dedication, to the people, you lead in this convention, you are commended, and I want to say thank you. 
for your exemplary leadership. Give yourself a hand. Amen. Give them a hand. Thank you, Sister Gloria Staples, the convention coordinator, chief of staff, my boss. Amen, everybody. But she does what she do, I believe. She does what she does because she wants to see this convention function with decency and order. Amen. So thank you, Sister Staples, for all that she contributed so much. You would have to imagine all the work that she has done to make this what it is today. To all the former presidents, would you please stand? Pastor Philip Carl James, <laughs> Pastor W. Green, and Dr. James Hunter, amen. Thank you all. Dr. Hunter is tucked away over there in the corner, but we always want to give him special recognition because he was there when this convention started. So we thank you, Dr. Hunter, for being one of the co-founders of this convention. God bless you. I want to let you all know I stand tall because I have been placed on your shoulders in order for people to see me. And so thank you all for what you have given thus far. As I started my journey as president, I have represented this convention First at the 57th annual session of PNBC in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I attended the planning session of the Midwestern Regional Convention in Louisville, Kentucky. I implemented a planning session for our state convention in October that was held at the New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church to discuss the pertinent and pressing issues that plague our convention. It was a productive meeting and there are areas of concern that need attention, and they will be dealt with. Amen, somebody. We thank God because we have to learn how to deal with what needs to be dealt with. We cannot just skip over things and act as if we don't see them. Amen, somebody. So I thank God that we have to address those issues. I was one of the facilitators for the Christian Education Summit sponsored by the Board of Education and Publication, publication of the Progressive National Baptist Convention, where I serve as a board member a few days prior to our winter board meeting held in Alexandria, Virginia. I attended the 56th annual session of the Midwestern region that was held in Wisconsin Dales, Wisconsin. I have also represented at various services, events, that are too numerous to name. But I want to tell you that I take pride and pleasure in serving as the representative for this outstanding organization. I serve with distinction and honor, and I thank God for all that God has done for me. I want to say to all of these pastors that have preached gone before me, starting with uh, Pastor McGee, you all are not fair. Amen. All Pastor McGee, who is the president of the Indiana Missionary Baptist State Convention of Indiana. That was fellowship night on Monday night, and he preached us crazy. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Thank you for fellowship with us on that night. As one of our late former presidents would say, I'm just standing to give scattering remarks. Amen. Amen. As I was in meditation as to what to say, Pastor McGee, I began to sit down and I went over this because you know as the president, you probably don't know, you know, Pastor Emery, Pastor Reed, Pastor Jane, Pastor Hunter. That so many things go on you pull it in so many different directions. Your mind is all over the place. And you have to settle down to get your bearings. And as I sat there at the computer this morning, sat down, I thought I was going to talk about one thing, but that didn't happen. 
But I began to write. I began to write, Pastor Tyler, that people are not as committed to conventions as much as they used to be. Because conventions seem unimportant, boring, outdated, obsolete. People have a tendency to fall away from foundational things and wander off to try something new in an attempt to make history. But I contend that you cannot make history until you know history. We have to understand what the convention stands for. Amen. Yes, we have to sit through reports of leaders who give an account of their stewardship. Listen to me, y'all. Pastor Tyler was in my notes. Amen. Stewardship, the work that they have engaged themselves in to affect change in lives in the lives of others. By way of encouragement, education, and edification. Edification is a key component of the convention. We should be edified as believers when we come here. Yes, it's an organization, but we are a part of an organism. And we need to be edified. That's why Congress class. They educate us. I was proud of the numbers of our Congress. You don't understand. To have 100 plus a couple of days in Congress for a state convention is outstanding. Let's thank God for each and every one of those that attended Congress class. Pastor Tyler, yes, we listened to the work, the report, watch this, the work, the effectiveness of leaders and after we hear the work that is being done then we engage in worship somebody missing what I'm saying after we listen to the reports that's why it's set up like it's set up because they need to be accountable because as a leader you ought to have an agenda you ought to have a vision you ought not just to sit on your blessed assurance and do not a thing. Amen, somebody. But after we listen to the reports, the work, then we engage in the worship of our God. I recall Pastor McDonald the words of Dr. Marvin McNichol, former president of Colgate Rochester. Words that he used related to work and worship. He reminisced, watch this, on the rhythms of the civil rights movement, which revolved around the combination of work and worship. Watch this, people would gather for worship in the evening, but that time of worship was never an end unto itself. Y'all stay with me, amen. Instead, I, I, Pastor Hunter, worship was the means by which the people sought to be soothed from the marches. The demonstration for justice in which they had engaged earlier that day as well as a means by which they were strengthened for the renewal of their activity on the next day. The praying, the preaching, the singing were exhilarating and uplifting, but they were never disconnected. Tyler from the work. Amen, somebody. The work that had to be done, and we live in a time, y'all stay with me, I'm already preaching, amen. We live in a time where people go to conferences for worship. Y'all stay with me, amen. Pastor Collins, they go into conferences because they want to worship. 
but there is no focus or emphasis on the word. Amen, somebody. People are looking for a consumer Christian, for a church with a great worship team and a great worship time. But I learned this, watch this, so many people are looking for worship. I want to go to a church where they got good worship. I want to go where they got good singing, a good praise to me. But watch this, when, when my children were young, and I'm sure you'll understand this, uh, it was known that if you play music or sing a song to your child, it will lull them to sleep. And I believe that we are being lulled to sleep. Sleeping through injustice. Sleeping through poverty. Sleeping through crime. Mass incarceration. High school dropout. Housing and health care crisis. And so on and so on. Because we want to do worship. We're being lulled to sleep. It's a strategy of the enemy. To get us entangled in the superficial. We are being seduced by the enemy. He is using, watch this. He's using what's, what once charged us to work and to witness. To weaken us without a sense of work. Somebody missing what I'm saying. The work, the, the worship used to charge us for work. But now we just want a good worship. And nobody's focusing on of the work. Yes, I hear you saying, yes, God is looking for worshipers. But when you understand what the word worship means, Pastor Tyler, Prascudo, amen. In the Greek means to kiss me, to fall under the authority, amen, somebody. Yes, he's looking for true worshipers that are willing to fall under his authority, fall under his word, not just hand raises. Lord have mercy. But those who can raise their hands and help somebody in need. He said, when I was naked, when I was hungry, when I was outdoor, when I was in prison, you did not help me. They said unto Jesus, when did we do these things to you? What you have done to the least of my people, you have done also unto me. Amen. He's not just looking for hand raisers, but those who are willing to raise a hand to help somebody else out. Amos 5 and 18 and 24 speaks to us. Micah 6 and 6 through 8 makes it clear that worship alone is not what God desires for his people of faith. There is work to be done, and too many Christians, good church folk, Today are ready to lift hands and worship, but won't lift a finger to work in the church or the community or to help someone stand or stand for something or stand against something. Let us not look at the convention as some boring, obsolete, outdated thing. Let us not tear it down. Some of us want to get rid of it. Some of us want to tear it down. We don't see any purpose with it. But we don't have to tear it down. The only thing we have to do, Pastor Jane, is make some renovations too. Amen, somebody. All we have to do is rebrand. All we got to do is make some renovations. That's all that God did for us. Amen, somebody. He rebranded us. He rebranded us. He reshaped us. Amen, somebody. Because we allowed his renovations to take effect in our life. Amen, somebody. I I'm glad. Anybody in the house glad that God didn't tear it down? Anybody glad that God did not tear you down? I serve a God that specializes in renovation, not demolition. Is there anybody in the house that realizes that you serve a God that specializes in renovation and not demolition? Y'all don't want to talk to me. Come here, fig tree, amen, in the vine yard. Y'all remember the fig tree? The Lord said it's not producing, so cut it down. But I thank God there was an intercessor that said, don't cut it down. Leave it alone this year. Let me do some work around it. Let me work on it. Let me fertilize it. Let me reproduce. Position it. Let me renew 
with. Let me revive this before kingdom work. Is there anybody in the house that know God will reposition you? God will renew you. God will revive you. How do you know, China? Because I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shores. I was very deeply stained within. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now say, am I? Is there anybody in the house that don't love? Look at you, look at your neighbor, say I'm glad that God gave me one more chance. Say yes, say yes, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and all things have become new. Say yes, say yes, is there anybody in the house that know God? Has turned your life around And no God Has made a way Out of the way Is there anybody In the house That no God Will renew you He will Revive you Y'all don't want to talk to me Come here Isaiah Isaiah said They that wait Upon the Lord They shall renew their strength They shall mount up On the wings of evil But I'm reminded of a new story about a woman and her baby. I remember when I heard the story, I got discouraged, but I kept on listening. It said that there was a hailstorm over in Chicago, and the hail came down with so much force. And the woman said that my baby was in the back.
this is your opportunity to enlist in God's office. The door of the church is open.